This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Shea. We go now to McAllen, Texas, where we're joined by Zenon Jaimes, who is the advocacy director for the Texas Civil Rights Project. He's part of their team that goes to the federal courthouse in McAllen each day since Trump began his zero-tolerance policy and collects information from parents who had their children taken away from them before they were taken to court to face criminal charges for crossing the border. So, Zenon, can you talk about uh, uh, your response to the executive order and what you've learned uh, from the parents uh, who you've spoken to at the courthouse? Yes, thank you so much for having me on. Um, I think your guests already hit the nail on the head. This is, for us, no solution to what the crisis is actually happening. Now, since the executive order, uh, since the zero tolerance policy was announced, we knew that McAllen and South Texas was going to be ground zero, because this is where we're seeing most of the crossings as well as asylum seekers. And so since the end of May to today, we have interviewed over 350 people and done intake with them. And these are people who have been separated from their, from their children, right? And so this is just in the McAllen courthouse. And as of right now, we're looking to connect all of them with legal counsel, but the crisis remains, right? We have no idea what the next steps are to connect them with their children who are currently in ORR shelters. And you know, speaking personally, having done these intakes myself, we've spoken to you know, mothers with children as young as four years old, to fathers with uh, children who are 16 years old, who came here because they were being threatened by gang members or the being threatened to join these gangs. Now, the exec and Bob also had also had talked about this very clearly, but the crisis was from the beginning the zero tolerance policy. And instead of going back on that, the executive order yesterday actually doubled down. We can still expect the same number of prosecutions to be happening in the McAllen courthouse. And for us, it's going to be just as important to keep going because actually the separation will continue. When someone is sent from the CBP processing center to the McAllen courthouse, they will not be with their child, right? So there's going to be around a 72-hour turnaround from when that person is getting their criminal prosecution to when they're exactly going to be sent to a family detention center, which is still unclear where exactly, because we're already at capacity with almost all of these centers. Well, could you also say something, Zenon, about the Flores settlement and whether you think it's actually possible for it to be uh, negotiated or changed in such a way that the Trump administration will actually be able to detain children for more than 20 days? Yeah. So, um, you know, many people have fought for the Flores settlement for many decades at this point. We now sort of see and understand, and many people have been raising this alarm for many weeks now, that this was the initial intention of the administration, right, to stuff up a ruckus, separate these people, and then when it came down to it, when the images were, became too horrific, to say, well, okay, well, we can keep them together, we're just going to keep them together in jail. Now, it remains to be seen how exactly this is going to work. We are sort of hearing different things. but. Uh, we think that it's going to be the intention of the administration to basically try to violate the Flores Agreement and this way force a, an entire conversation on this. And that would be catastrophic because it would lead to the indefinite detention of these families, which we know this is what the administration is seeking in the first place as a way to deter people from even coming. And we have to keep that in mind, right? They're trying to punish children and families to basically send a message to the rest of the Americas and all over the world that if you come here, you not only will you get criminal prosecution, but we will hold you in a prison for indefinite amount of time. Now, can you explain what it means, Anen? When the government announces today, if parents want to get their children back, they have to go through the normal sponsorship process. And really, what exactly is happening? I mean, we spoke to Congress member Jayapal, who went to a prison in Washington state where well over 100 women are held. A number of them, their children, they don't know where they were. They were shipped to. The mothers were flown to Washington state. Meanwhile, you have the Secretary of Homeland Security saying, oh, they can Skype their kids all the time. They don't know where they are. And what it means to say they can now um, uh, go through the normal sponsorship process. When they call a number that they were handed in court, it says something like, if you want to get your kid back, you can leave a message here, but know that what you say here can and will be used against you in court. Yes, exactly. And you sort of highlighted the exact nature of the black hole of all of the information here. 
So what we're currently thinking what will be happening, and remember this is just all very new and the administration has not been clear, is that parents who are currently in immigration detention will have to go through the normal Office of Refugee Resettlement uh, process to sponsor or, and get their children back. Now, this in itself is a long and arduous process, and remember that ORR is under the Health and Human Services Department. This can involve months of background checks, um, fingerprinting, in some instances, saliva tests. Um, part of the ACLU lawsuit um, that was happened a couple months ago showed that one mother had to take saliva tests four times to basically prove that it was her child. And at the end of the day, the administration is making it even more difficult to get people, um, children sponsored. So, you know, it might be many months and in some cases maybe over a year before parents who, remember, are in detention facilities, many of them will not have legal counsel or any kind of help to navigate all of the system before they even get a chance of sponsoring and seeing their children again. Well, we want to thank you very much for joining us as Anen Jaimes, uh, joining us from McAllen, Texas.